Welcome to a lesson on determining the region in the xy plane for which a first order differential equation would have a unique solution through a point. If we have a first order differential equation in standard form as we see here, with this initial condition, if f of x comma y and the partial derivative of f with respect to y are both continuous on a rectangular region defined by a less than x less than b, and c less than y less than d that contains the point x sub zero, y sub zero, given by the initial condition, then there exists an interval centered at x sub zero and a unique function y of x defined on the interval that satisfies the initial value problem. So our main goal here is to find the region where f and the partial derivative are both continuous. Notice how this region depends on both x and y unlike the linear first order differential equations that only depend on x. Let's take a look at our first example. We want to determine the region in the xy plane for which the given DE has a unique solution through the given point. The first step is to recognize that we do have a first order differential equation, but it's not written in the correct form. We want our differential equation in this form here. So we need to solve this for dy dx, or y prime in this case, so we're going to divide both sides by x. So we'll have y prime equals y divided by x, which means f of x comma y is equal to y divided by x, and now we'll find the partial of f with respect to y, so we'll treat x as a constant, and since the derivative of y with respect to y is one, we would just have one over x, or one divided by x. <clears throat> so now if we look at f, the only restriction here is that we know x can't equal zero because we'd have division by zero. Therefore, f will be continuous on the region when x is less than zero or when x is greater than zero. Notice how these would just be two half planes. If we look at the partial derivative, notice the restriction is the same, x can't equal zero. So the partial derivative is continuous over the same region when x is less than zero or when x is greater than zero. Normally these two regions won't be the same, so we'd be looking for the intersection of these two regions, but in this case, since they are the same, the original differential equation has unique solutions over the region when x is less than zero or when x is greater than zero. Remember these are regions in the xy plane, so these are two half planes. Let's take a look at another example. Same question, different differential equation. Notice again it's not in the correct form, so we'll divide both sides by the quantity one minus y squared to solve for y prime. So we'd have y prime equals x squared divided by the quantity one minus y squared. So now we should recognize that f of x comma y is equal to x squared divided by the quantity one minus y squared. Now let's find the partial derivative of f with respect to y. It might help to think of f as x squared times the quantity one minus y to the second to the negative one power. Again, we'll treat x as a constant, so we'll apply the chain rule here, multiply by negative one, so we'll have negative x squared times the quantity one minus y squared to the negative two times negative two y. So our partial derivative is going to be positive two x squared y all over the quantity one minus y squared squared. Looking at function f, the only restriction here is we can't have a zero in the denominator or division by zero, so we know that one minus y squared can't equal zero, or one can't equal y squared. We square root both sides, so we know y can't equal plus or minus one. Everywhere else, f is going to be continuous. And again, if we look at the partial derivative, notice how the denominator is going to be zero 
again when one minus y squared is equal to zero. So the partial derivative has the same restrictions, which means the differential equation will have unique solutions over the entire xy plane except when y equals plus or minus one, which means y could be less than negative one or between negative one and one or y could be greater than one. And this is the region that we're looking for. I think we'll stop here and call this part one. We'll look at two more examples in part two. I hope this has been helpful.